Hey everybody, welcome to the 150th edition of No DQ and A video right here on youtube.com slash no DQ CAW. And as always, no DQ.com. Thank you guys so much for checking out the videos and supporting the website all this time. Uh, it's hard to believe we're at 150 now, but um, we're just getting started. Got a lot of questions here, and um, I have a special bonus video for episode 150. I'll tell you more about that at the end. But for now, let's get to your questions. Is Randy Orton in danger of being released by WWE as some WWE officials want his contract terminated for financial reasons, and could you see Orton going to TNA? At this point, I think it could go either way. It's 50-50. It's on one hand, you could look at WWE's perspective on it. They're paying Randy Orton a ton of money, and if they bring him back and put him in a main event situation and he screws up again, that's a lot of money that they're going to lose. So um, on one hand, they might want to just cut their losses and let him go. Now, um, there's a lot of things you can do with Randy Orton. Randy Orton could um, take some time off and uh, just heal his body up and just uh, relax for a while and then come back better than ever. Another thing he could do is leave WWE and join TNA. Now, I know TNA would absolutely kill to have Randy Orton working for them. I've talked about how TNA needs to push new talent and they need to focus on creating their own stars, but Randy Orton would be a huge asset for them, at least in the short term. Um, we've seen how Kurt Angle helped TNA out. Even Mick Foley helped uh, improve TNA's ratings for a while. So Randy Orton would do something he would at least uh, draw some more interest into the TNA product. Long term, I'm not so sure how great of an idea it'll be, but um, it would definitely help them uh, to some degree. Like I said, it, it's a matter of what WWE and Randy Orton want to do. Perhaps Randy Orton himself is just uh, fed up with WWE and fed up with the schedule and he, he wants a break. So there's really no way to know what's going to happen, but it will be interesting to see how it plays out over the next several months, and I say that anything's possible. If Kevin Nash had never gotten injured and Scott Hall had not been released, how far do you think that the NWO storyline would have gone? And will we still have seen the two-year Triple H and Shawn Michaels feud? Please answer in video from Alex in Norway. I believe that the original plan... Um, Obviously, Shawn Michaels was in the NWO, and uh, they were trying to recruit Triple H into the NWO. I believe the original storyline plan was for Triple H to turn down the NWO offer. So we would have seen Triple H feuding with Kevin Nash, and uh, perhaps we would have seen uh, Triple H and Shawn Michaels feud, but the roles would have been reversed with uh, Triple H as the babyface and Shawn Michaels as the heel. I suspect the plan all along was for, was for Shawn Michaels to wrestle again. Um, the interesting thing about this whole situation, you know, I get the what if question all the time and uh, I, I don't really like those questions because I think that um, when things progress over a long period of time, uh, the what if doesn't really matter all that much. But in this case, it happened so abruptly, Triple H uh, turned heel because of Kevin Nash getting injured and um, that really played a big role in future WWE storylines. Um, if Triple H had not turned turned heel, would we have seen evolution? Would uh, Randy Orton and uh, Batista have gotten those big pushes? Uh, who knows? And uh, we had the whole Shawn Michaels comeback due to the fact that Kevin Nash got hurt and uh, Triple H turned heel. So it's definitely something that's very interesting. And uh, no doubt that, that that whole issue with Kevin Nash and Scott Hall as well. But more, more I think it was... Uh, Kevin Nash getting hurt more than anything else that really uh, had that caused such a drastic change in WWE storylines and who knows where it would have gone. Hey Aaron, love your videos, man. I was wondering why WWE never made William Regal a world champion or a top face. I mean, he's got mic skills and he won the King of the Ring and he's awesome in the ring. Please answer in video for the 150th episode. Thank you again. I think the biggest problem with William Regal is that... Um, he just didn't look like your your typical WWE main eventer. He wasn't jacked up, and um, uh, he didn't look like a guy that would uh, be pushed to the top in WWE. Now, there have been exceptions. We've seen guys like Mick Foley make it despite not having that look. But um, 
in terms of Regal, he also had a lot of personal issues, and um, he ended up uh, losing his job with WWE at one point and then coming back down the road. And then uh, with the King of the Ring, uh, he won that and then got suspended. So uh, Regal had some per personal issues, and um, that and the fact that he didn't really have the look. And I mean, he was good on the mic, but he had the British accent, and um, I think that might have worked against him too. And um, while he was a good uh, technical wrestler, or a great technical wrestler, um, he I don't think he... Uh, really uh, had that much charisma in the ring beyond that in terms of, you know, just the, having this fire behind him. That, I mean, was, he was pretty good, but and uh, still is pretty good, but I, I just don't think he... Uh, there was something he was missing, um, whether it be uh, the charisma or um, just the overall fire. I mean, he's a very entertaining guy and uh, great great mic skills and uh, just, the, just overall one of the best performers well-rounded in WWE that they've ever had. And uh, he's no doubt a guy that you want to have around to train the younger talent. And uh, he, he's an asset. But, um, yeah, I mean, those are the reasons why I don't think he ever got to the very top in WWE. At the current time and with the emergence of Brian, Punk, and Ziggler, don't you think it is the best time to give Cena a vacation and just test how WWE can survive without him? It might not be all that bad. Your thoughts. The bottom line is WWE is afraid to uh, take him off TV at all. And uh, the few times that John Cena has not been uh, the focal point of Raw, um, the numbers have dropped. I mean, you look at the Memorial Day Raw, for instance. And um, I believe uh, the Raw after um, the December pay-per-view, TLC, they, they uh, had that, that episode of Raw with... Uh, CM Punk, Daniel Bryan, and Zack Ryder in the main event, and the, the raw rating for that was was below average. So um, they're they're just not going to want to take that risk. Um, the only way that Cena is going to be taking a vacation is that if he either number one uh, gets injured or number two uh, they uh, suspend him because they catch him taking something he's not supposed to. Uh, beyond that, I don't think they're going to voluntarily. Uh, take him off television. I just don't see that happening. If Cena's divorce turns bad, do you see him becoming like Flair financially and unable to stop wrestling? Um, I don't think John Cena is the spender that Ric Flair is. Ric Flair was a guy who uh, lived the character in real life. He would spend all his money. He would uh, live, live life in the fast lane. I don't think John Cena um, is like that. John Cena is a guy, first of all, who is constantly busy, and um, he's he's working all the time. And I don't think he's a guy that really uh, spends a ton of money on things. Now um, I know Cena likes cars and all that, and uh, that's one thing that he does spend money on. But he's made so much money in WWE over the last several years. I think it would really take a lot for him to uh, have financial trouble. And um, I think he'll be okay in this situation with this divorce. I think that um, he's still got a lot of years ahead of him, and I, I think he'll, he'll be just fine. Which of the following do you think could make TNA better? Get rid of Hogan and Bischoff, go back to the six-sided ring, or replace Dixie Carter with someone better? I've been saying this all along. Uh, get rid of Hogan and Bischoff. I mean, they, they had their chance. I think Hogan and Bischoff should have been gone uh, halfway into 2010, when the when the Monday Night Wars, the second Monday Night Wars didn't pan out, uh, that should have been it for them. Uh, the fact that they stuck around and did the Immortal storyline, it it, it it was counterproductive, and uh, it did nothing to help TNA grow. Uh, no doubt Hulk Hogan uh, did do something for TNA. He, he brought them uh, more awareness than they ever had. When Hogan made his debut on the January 4th, 2010, episode of Impact, they did their highest rating ever. They had something like 3 million people tune in when Hulk Hogan came out to the ring. That was their big chance, and uh, they blew it. Um, that should have been it. Six-sided ring, doesn't matter. I mean, it was something cool that made TNA different from WWE, but in, at the end of the day, it doesn't um, really make a difference in, in terms of how the in-ring in product is. It just doesn't really matter. And um, 
Dixie Carter is uh, the person who who is the the reason that TNA is still in business. I mean, uh, when TNA first started in 2002, the, they were not doing well. The the weekly pay per views uh, were not making enough money, and and the Jarretts were on the verge of going out of business when the the Carter family stepped in and uh, saved saved it, saved TNA from going under. So uh, without Dixie Carter, you don't have TNA. So. Uh, she's going to be around whether we like it or not. I don't really think she has a good mind for wrestling. I, I don't think that um, she really knows what she's doing, but she is pumping the money into the product, and uh, that's what's keeping them keeping them around. Congratulations on 150 episodes. When do you think we will actually see a serious competitor for, for WWE? Well, going back to a few minutes ago with TNA, I mean... Anything can really happen. I mean, TNA could come up with one hot storyline and all of a sudden they could be back in, in contention. Uh, they haven't found it yet, but you never know when something is going to catch on. I mean, when 1996 uh, began, who knew that Stone Cold Steve Austin by the end of the year would be one of the hottest acts in wrestling? You just didn't know. I mean, you never know... Uh, which character is going to come along, or somebody might say something, and, and uh, it becomes a, a hot catchphrase, and the guy starts to build momentum. I mean, you never really know. Anything can happen. And uh, going back way to the beginning of, of uh, this video with, with Randy Orton, if they brought him in, who knows? Maybe uh, Orton would bring in a lot of new eyeballs. Maybe Orton would have some new ideas that he could uh, bring into TNA. I mean, like I said, you never know. All right, that'll wrap it up for the 150th edition of No DQ and a video, or is that the end? Here's the here's the deal right now. I am going to do a second video for episode 150, a bonus video. You can check that out exclusively at blip.tv slash no DQ D-O-T-C-O-M, no DQ.com. Blip, blip TV, no DQ.com. Um, I will have a link posted in the description of the video on YouTube. It'll also be up on NoDQ.com, um, so you can go check out that video. I'll answer more of your questions. And uh, like I said, thanks as always for supporting the videos. I really do appreciate it. If you could, if you could take just a moment of your time, spread spread the word about the videos. Um, go to Facebook, go to Twitter, post a link to this video. Um, I really do appreciate all the support from you guys. And uh, on that note, we'll see you next time.